the difference between a Gen 2 and a Gen 1 block is these set of holes here. So there, there, there. They've machined extra holes in. Um, we'll also see the main cap, see the design of the main cap, though that isn't part of the block casting, is it? This is casting, so that, that is our difference there. But you'll see here the, the design here, we've got a recess, no recess and a different shape. So that's the quick version of Gen 1 block, Gen 2 block. Just the hole there through the fucking box for. Good question, isn't it? What is it for? We'll put it under the camshaft on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> G'day guys. It's Calvin from the Couching Company in New Zealand. Oh, and Jason. And Jason too. Both of us. Yep. And we were just, we, we were fortunate enough to have lots of bits lying around and so sit them next to each other so we can compare and share some of the knowledge which is kind of disappearing on this older stuff. Toyota at some point would have done a release and said, hey, the block on the 1UZFE in the 1994 release production year released in the USA in 1995, it had this upgrade at the block has been changed to improve something. And it's because they put some holes in it. Or it's a lighter block. Which it is a lighter block because it's got some holes in it. So to define the Series 1 and Series 2 or Gen 1 and Gen 2 UZs. It's the change between the thick rods and the thin rods. And this happened in the LS400s and the Celsius around about, uh, it was the ninth month of 1994 to be exact. But in the USA, you'll see it in uh, registered 95, so 95, year 95s, model year. It also happened in the Sora's SC400s when they went to the sequential ECU, which is the wider body ECU. Then the crowns, the 131 and the 141 were Gen 1, and the 151 non-VVTIs are Gen 2. And so not only did Toyota, that's when Toyota put the lighter rods and the lighter pistons in, which rev better in an NA4. So that's what we mean when we go Gen 2 engine. It's got the one with the lighter rods and lighter pistons. Crankshaft, pretty much identical. It's probably easier just to say they are the same crank. Um, they are different part numbers, but it's very hard to tell the difference between the two. It is the Gen 3s or the VVTIs where they lighten the crank by one and a half kilos. But we're focusing on the block casting. The VVTIs block casting is, is almost the same, but of course they've modified it for the oil galleries for the VVTI. Three years they put a bigger hole in it, but all this, the same casting. And the Gen 1 and Gen 2 blocks, I believe, came from the same casting. So, I actually asked on a Facebook post and if there was a difference. And some guys were brave enough to actually say, no, there's no difference. Even though they're wrong, that's a pretty brave move. Uh, but the, a lot of guys were guessing, and I had some pictures... Um, and I asked specifically on the block casting, not into the VVTIs, but specifically on the block casting between a Gen 1 and a Gen 2. <coughs> this is a Gen 1. It does look like it's been under the sea, because I would almost say that these are corroded just about through the oil gallery. Knock sensors are a bolt on, and we haven't removed them because this block is scrap, it's going to rubbish. It's got massive pitting in the bores. This is 100% a Gen 2 block, stripped from a Gen 2 engine. Uh, some people suggested there was a difference in the holes in the top. And I can see no difference between the oiling and the water holes in the top between the two engines. I can't see any shapes of the, saw, the same. I believe the bores, the sleeves are the same. In here, all the ribbing is the same. All the same block mounting points exist. 
Certainly on the front, everything is the same there as well, and all accessories bolt on. Down the sides, they are the same, though, have you seen the ones that don't have the holes? So these holes here are used for some bracketry and are used on the crown, the 131 crown, to mount uh, the oil filter housing. Some blocks don't have that tapped. So that could actually be seen as a difference, but it's not between Gen 1 and Gen 2. Uh, it's specific to some some models that seem to randomly not have them tapped. Other side. Oop. I was in such a hurry today, I didn't even manage to get my work boots on. Can we just uh, try not to smash the torch? Same thing here. Same thing along here. They're all the same. So the difference comes in the underneath. Rolly rolly poly. So this is a Gen 1. This is the Gen 1. You go back here and there is no hole board in that location there. No, it's wrong. It's there. Oh, sorry, is it? Look. Oh, yes, okay. There. Yes, it's there. Sorry, that location there. That's where the hole's board and it, it continues on the Gen 2 through. Uh, so you go one, two, three, four, five. So it goes through number five, through number four, and number three, but not number two. So I was thinking um, possibly for windage, pressure between um, the compartments of the engine, but it doesn't make sense not to put it through the front one. If we look at the cap design, we do see a difference. We've got some chamfering and we've got no recess, it's flat on the edges in here. We still have the place for some oil to get into the thrust washers. Whereas these ones are square and I've got some recesses and a big recess in here, still the same oil uh, ports for the thrust washer or places where oil can get in. It comes down to these, these holes is the main one. And, and of course, this isn't part of the casting. It's just interesting to note because they are matched with the block. And I haven't compared if it changed partway through the 10s, but I suspect that's a 20 only. And we have the hole there, there, and there. I actually think... Um, it's, it's to do with... Either they were going for lighter, so they found somewhere, but I actually think it was to do with block harmonics, is my guess. Something to do with the different reciprocating mass changed the harmonics of the block slightly, and that's how they solved the problem. Possibility? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a Toyota engineer. Correct. I need to find a Toyota engineer who worked on these and can tell us why on the Gen 2s they made those couple of changes. And interesting enough, guys, uh, we do have a 1UZ VVTi block here, and it does have those same holes. I can't tell you on the 3UZ, we didn't check. Or I, if I checked, I didn't remember. Um, hey, I'd love to hear some thoughts on what you guys think of why they put those extra holes in. If anyone's got any documentation, I would love to see that. Um, we're actually working on a video too on the the bore thickness and, and the material between the, the cylinders on a 3UZ and this one actually fits in really nicely with that um, uh, we could always say that the drain cock is different too but it's a bolt on it is a bolt on, it's an extra compared to the Gen 1 it's definitely that hole. The reason I found out about this actually is, is because the stock car boys, the uh, dirt track speedway guys, some of them 
seek that Gen 2 block. Um, and that is where this one is destined. It's got some rust marks, but it's going to be bored and probably make about 500 horsepower NA when it's finished. A few other interesting things to note on these blocks too is the series of numbers. And this is to do with the bearings. That's to do with the big end bearings that are fitted. And I believe these ones are to do with the main bearings that are fitted. So they, they aren't someone afterwards. That is actually done at the factory, that, that scribbling on the block. Two the same. Oh, two the same? Yeah. See, this has got a 2223. And this has got a 2222. So it's got a, a, a three, bearing size three on the back upper? Is that the, that's the upper, eh? That's the lowers, that's the upper, so it's got one bearing size different on that one. Um, so quite a different set of bearings. I think you'll find, you know, I think you'll find most titles will have that stamp on the box. Yeah. See. Yeah, um, it kind of freaks people out a little bit, or they, they question it when they get a block and they pull it apart and they think it's a virgin and there's some numbers on it like that, they're like, what's, what is it, what are these numbers? Mm. Yeah. Of course we work on lots of Toyotas, so we, we're quite used to it, it's just like, yeah. And then you get a set of aftermarket bearings and you put them the same size everywhere. Which can catch you out. Which can catch you out, yeah. Did your engine have... You measured all up your bearings and it was all the same, or not? Uh, this this motor got a new crank, so it got everything was all. I, got, I just I gave I gave it the machinist. I made fix it. Yeah, got <laughs> cool. Yeah. But yeah, that's got all the same size bearings in it. Yeah, and and of course that was just to to allow for machining, to yeah. mass production machining differences. So they must have had someone at the factory actually measuring bearing clearances and going, no, that one's not quite right. Mm. Mm. It's a bit of a pain, you can't just go to Toyota, you've got to buy. If you're buying genuines. Yeah, you're buying genuines, you've got to buy, so if you, so if you had a block and it was like two, four, three, two, you've got to buy sets of bearings. Oh, okay, yep. You've got to buy a whole set. Yep. So it's quite expensive, quite quickly. Yes. <laughs> So I hope that's been helpful, a bit of useless information, but if you have to tell the blocks apart, it is possible to do that. Talk to you again soon. Catch you later.